Hey guys, was geht ab and welcome to this video. And today once more we are talking about color looks and yes, we are talking also about orange and teal, but I would say it's a little bit more like advanced orange and teal, so it's not the classic um, orange and teal look that you can find everywhere on YouTube. And we will use some very, very advanced techniques, so definitely check it out and stay with me until the end because I have a little surprise for you at the end and now we are jumping into Photoshop. Alright guys, here we are in the Photoshop workspace and the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the raw converter because you want to do some minor changes for contrast and everything. If you don't have a smart object or like a raw photo, it's not a problem at all. You can just go to filter and click on camera raw filter. You will see the exact same dialogue. And then also if you're using Lightroom, you can basically do the exact same things in Lightroom. Okay, so first of all, we want to add some contrast because contrast is always nice. Then we want to take back the highlights to get some details back in the sky and then brighten up the shadows a little bit and a little bit the whites as well. And then taking down the blacks a little bit to add a little bit more contrast. And that's already it. Basically, we can also get down the temperature a little bit, but that looks good so far. And now we are jumping back to Photoshop. Now, as I said in the beginning, we want to start very simple and then stack it up. So the first thing you want to do is you click on this little icon down here and then you click on channel mixer. So you probably never opened this one because not that many people are using it, but it's very powerful. And the first thing we do is we click on output channel and choose blue. And here we type in minus 50. 150 and zero and boom, that's already it. It already looks quite cool, I think. And of course, it's a little bit of different orange and teal look compared to the one I showed you in Lightroom a couple of months ago already. And you probably already saw that in some other tutorials if you Googled for orange and teal in Photoshop. So that's not really new, but we wanna continue now with some very advanced techniques. The first thing we do is we open a new curse layer. And if you're not sure about the curves, if you don't understand them, definitely check out my last video because I explained everything very, very in detail there. So definitely check that one out. For everyone else, we drag the curves below the channel mixer because we want to have the channel mix on top because that's our basic look. So everything we do down here in the curves will be affected as well by the channel mixer. So that's good because we will keep our basic look that way. But of course we can do some things here and I want to choose my balance setup. And that's basically a preset where nothing really changed in the beginning. So if I enable and unable this, it doesn't really make a difference. And that's because I did the same curve in every single channel. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, definitely check out my tutorials on curves. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to add some blue in the darker areas and to do that, we go to green and drag the anchor point for the darks a little bit down. And then we also switch to red and take it down as well. And as you can see, we already get, get this awesome blue tones in the dark. It looks awesome. And we can also play around with the blue channel a little bit, bring it maybe up a little bit, maybe down a little bit, depends on what kind of look you want. But I think it looks good so far like this. The next thing we want to do is we want to correct the skin tones a little bit. That will happen a lot to you if you use orange and teal because sometimes it just looks a little bit off. And especially if you have more like a portrait kind of photo, you want to really correct the skin tones because otherwise it would look weird. A small tip here, um, if you have, for example, lips in the photo, lips are very, very red. And due to this editing process, the lips will look very orange. Just click on the channel mixer layer and use the layer mask to correct it. Just take it off at the lips. But for now, we just want to edit the skin tones a little bit in general. And to do that, we create a new channel mixer layer and you probably never saw this technique before. So what we do here is we switch the mode to monochrome. So we will basically have a black and white image and then drag the red slider to the very, very left and the blue and green slider a little bit brighter and then set the mode to multiply 
And it will look weird in the beginning, but now you will take the constant and drag it to the right. And now you just have to figure it out a little bit. It's always a little bit different for every image. And you want to play a little bit around with it, something like this maybe, and then just take down the opacity so that it looks good. As you can see, the person will look more tanned, it looks awesome, but it's still a little bit too saturated and a little bit like too much. So we will take the opacity a little bit more down and then we create another layer. It's called hue and saturation. We will click on this little hand icon here, then click on the skin and now just take down the saturation as much as you want to. And if you want to, you can also change the hue a little bit so that it looks perfect with the photo. And yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. And depending on your background, I don't really have that much red tones in the background, but if you have, they will change as well. So what you can do is you, you can just select them, get them into a group, click on this layer mask and use the shortcut Control I and then select the brush tool and white at the foreground color and then just paint over the person and now only the person will be affected. A small hack if you maybe want to affect the background just a little bit by this layers, you can just click on the um, layer mask with a double click and this window will open where you can take down the density a little bit. So it would affect the background a little bit. That's basically the opacity of the layer mask. So that's a little trick right there. Uh, but I think we are looking good so far and now we want to continue with the general look of the photo. At this point you might already notice that I really like curves and that's what we want to do now is we want to create another curves layer. Just click on curves and there we are again. And what I want to do is I want to have some more blue tones in the very darks and a little bit more contrast in general. So I will create a little S curve here and then I will Go over to the greens, take down the greens a little bit, maybe even a little bit more so we get a little bit more like brownish tones as well. And then the red and take the red down. And as you can see now the whole image of course gets darker, but especially in the darker areas we'll have more blue tones. We can also do this a little bit more so that the effect is even stronger because it's always easier to take down the effect a little bit later. So that looks pretty cool. Let's go back here and maybe brighten up this area a little bit. Okay, that's cool so far, but of course we don't want to have it affected on the whole image because that looks a little bit stupid, right? So we click on the layer mask again, control I again to invert the layer mask and then take a brush, white brush, take down the opacity a little bit to around like, let's say 35, sounds good. And then just brush in the areas you want to have affected. So you can basically decide a little bit which areas are going to be a little bit darker and a little bit bluer. I think we also can add a little bit more blue. Let's just add a little bit more blue here. And yeah, that looks cool. And then also let's just brighten up it a little bit more because we don't want to have it that dark. Okay, that looks cool. And now we can just add contrast wherever we want. Okay, here a little bit. Yeah, my PC is a little bit slow right now because I'm recording this video as well. I think that looks cool so far. Of course, you can make it a little bit more detailed, but I think for me, for this tutorial, it's cool. And then we will also create another curves layer and basically do exactly the opposite. So we will take down the blue tones and then add a little bit green tones and of course also a little bit red tones. Okay, and then we also take down a little bit the brightness of the whole image so that it doesn't get too bright. And then there's another small trick I wanna show you. So if you wanna say that you only wanna have this layer affecting the highlights. So what you can do is you just double click on the layer. You don't click on the symbol or on the layer mask, on the layer, double click on the layer and then this dialog will open. And what we can say here is, okay, we only want to have it in the highlights. So we say this layer is not affecting the shadows. And as you can see now, the shadows will be disabled. But of course it looks a little bit weird now because it's very, very harsh, right? So what you want to do is you want to click Alt and then click on one half of the slider and then you can create a little gradient 
and that looks absolutely perfect. And of course we can do the same technique for the layer below because we only want to affect the darks there, right? So what we do here is we just drag this layer to the left and then as again make a little gradient. And then we can of course, for example, take down the density again a little bit so that it affects the whole image a little bit more, maybe like this. Okay, I think the photo looks pretty amazing so far. I think we will keep it like this. I mean, if you compare what we did in just a couple of minutes, it's absolutely amazing, super fast if you know what to do. Always keep in mind to remember those little tricks like with the layers or with the skin because they at the end make a huge difference, so better keep them in mind. All right, guys, that's already it. Thank you very much for watching and if you enjoyed this video, as always, feel free to share it with your friends and help me a little bit to grow this channel. But also, as I promised, I have a little surprise for you and the surprise is that I uploaded the whole Photoshop Datei to cloud so that you can download it, check it out in your Photoshop and actually see how I used all the sliders, all the layers and everything. That's pretty cool. I will put the link in the description so that you can just click on it and go for it. Have fun with it and we will see us next time.